Hey, how you doing? Mr. Bill here. And today I'm going to show you how I tune samples or how I generally tune samples uh, that come from like modular synths and stuff like that. And this is a problem that I've come up across more and more recently as I've just gotten a modular synth set up or I've had a modular synth set up now for about maybe half a year or a year. And um, quite often when I record things out of the, out of the synth, like these long lines here, this was actually recorded by, um, <clears throat> by Ryan, the other dude in Electricado, but it's the same problem with all modular synths really. So they're always like slightly out of tune. They're always quite dissonant. Um, and the problem with dissonant samples is like when you go to retune them, you're not only tuning, like you're, you're getting one of the notes correct, but one of the notes is always still incorrect. So with this file, we have some sounds like this. Um, well, that sounds kind of crazy, but like it's just a bunch of weird modular sounds. And I cut this one sound out of it here, uh, and it sounds like this. And this is like a techno track, so I just looped it. Um... And the problem with the loop is that this note here is in key with the track, but this one is not. So together it sounds like this. Uh, and what we want is this for this first note to be a semitone up really. So it's like, sorry, two semitones up. So really what we want is something like that. Um, so there's two problems with that though. The first problem is that it's just annoying to do. Uh, and the second problem is that <coughs> um, it kind of like stretches this a little bit too. So it becomes like a little I don't know, out of time or whatever. You can do it that way. Um, but this, uh, w the way that I've been retuning these samples and, and this goes for all modular samples really because they're always like inherently a little bit out because it's just made with, you know, um, like analog hardware and whatnot so i've been using frequency shifters and basically this will just like pitch up or down the, the sample a little bit so if we're listening to something like this uh, and we turn the fine up you can hear it's having like an effect on the pitch and that's basically what we want to do here on this stuff uh to get it in key but the problem is that when we when we do this when we get the the bottom note up it also takes that beep up as well this thing so now that's out of key or maybe it's in key i don't know but i want it to be that note anyway so to keep it that note but to pitch the the bottom one up i basically made this rack um and one one of the EQs is, uh, it's just like a, a frequency splitter and I have a tutorial on this that I did a long time ago. Um, and then I have mapped these to a macro control so I can change the split point. Uh, now let's turn this off. So now this is split on its own chain. And if we put a frequency shifter after it, we can just tune that part of it and then we can leave the top part untouched. So you kind of tune the thing that you want to tune and leave the thing alone that you don't want to tune. Uh, and then I also just put this saturator on it just to make it a little bit more bitey. Um, so yeah, without the rack, it sounds like this. And with the rack, it sounds like this. Just a little bit more like tuned and in key with the tracks. So and now we have this. Cool. So yeah, basically that's um, that was the trick uh, using frequency shifters to tune samples. So uh, the other frequency shifter that I've been using probably more than the Ableton one is this Ubic S one. And if you just put the wet to 100% and then you put the frequency range to like 200 hertz, then this becomes your tuner, similar to the fine on the um, on the frequency shifter, uh, Ableton's frequency shifter. And this can actually be a good way to tune kicks as well and stuff like that because it's just like it seems like the phase stays more like correlated.
Like if you're just tuning up or down a semitone, I've found that that's kind of a nicer way to do it than doing it with like transposition and stuff like that because it kind of messes with the phase relationship somehow. I don't really know exactly how that that's working. Um, but yeah, that is kind of the trick anyway. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed that. And speaking of samples, if you want some, you should go to my website, uh, live.mrbillstunes.com forward slash sample hyphen packs. And then I've got a bunch of sample packs up here and you can tune them yourself if you like, but I think I've already tuned most of them for you. So you don't have to, <laughs> um, I'll put a link in the description and thanks for watching.